is that uh, actually you should be employable after three years of studying, uh, after the undergraduate, undergraduate course. And undergraduate course. And that, will, that, caused, that caused several problems in, uh, in implementation of this process in, in these countries. Because what it resulted in was that the, that the, that the undergraduate course served only as a, as a precursor for, uh, for a master's degree. But then after, after you studied in, after you studied undergraduate course, you, can, you, was, you actually were not employable and the employees didn't, uh, employers didn't uh, find you attractive for the job market. So basically that was one fail of Bologna and it, it, is, important to, it is important to understand that the, that these two cycles, undergraduate, undergraduate and graduate, are modeled after UK system of education, and uh, they are similar to UK system and US system, I think. And basically, the and basically, and basically this, the implementation in uh, in, in universities across the Europe is something problematic. Second of all, uh, the, the ECT, ECTS credits, the ECTS credits function uh, functions as a, as a as a matter that you can compare with them the, the education you receive in every institution in Europe. Basically, one ACTS credit constitutes 30 hours of work. 30 hours of work. Basically, to obtain a bachelor's degree, you have to, you have, to have at least 180 ECTS, ECTS credits. And to obtain a master's degree, you have to you have to have at least 90 or 90 ECTS credits. Basically, that, that basically that means that in that in one year of study you should have you should uh, you should obtain 60 60 ECTS credits. Basically, that that means that it is uh, 180 hours of work every year. And uh, however. There are some problems again with that because um, in several countries the one ECTS credit it is not is not it is not awarded uh, awarded for 30 hours of work. It, it was estimated that, for example, in Britain it is 32. Uh, however, in uh, Austria it is only uh, 25 or something like that. So basically, what it means that even if Bologna claims that it, they will they will make a comparable system in Europe, it, it's not actually working that way. So now yes. You said 180 hours, but you're 1,800. Which one is it? 1,800. 1,800. 1,800. 1,800. So basically, oh uh, yes. So that, so that's about Bologna process. So whatever. Uh, so uh, now, now we, now we are in Europe, which has the same, which has similar conditions for students in basically all the countries. So. Uh, there, here comes the European Union. The European Union, with, with its directives and regulations, uh, 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 managed to get that, the, that all European Union students have, must have the same conditions to study in every country, uh, in every country, as the same as the home students in this in this country. For, that, uh, for example, that if, you, if you are a Slovak and you are going to study in Denmark, uh, you have to have the same conditions that, you, uh, that if the Denmark students, if the if Dens, that don't pay uh, the, uh, the tuition fees. Or, or something like that, you, you, you don't have to pay the, the tuition fees as well. So for example, that creates a, some kind of paradoxes in, for example, the United, United Kingdom, because if you are going to study in uh, Scotland as a, as a EU student, you don't have to pay tuition fees. But uh, if you are from England and you are going to study in Scotland, you have to, you have to pay 9,000 uh, uh, pounds per year. So <laughs> that's one of the reasons why it's why it's why is it good if Scotland's you know, get uh, away from the European Union. So, basically, um, uh, this, so now we have, the, so this degree, uh, so the students have to have the same conditions in, in studying across the, across the Europe. However, uh, if, they, if they get the degree in the, in the foreign institutions, the degrees are not actually automatically recognized by EU member states. There is no, there is no directive, or the directive of European commissions that says that uh, the institutions in home countries uh, accept, must accept the diplomas from, from uh, foreign universities. However, uh, they say that actually if there are, if there are no uh, significant alterations between the, between the degree program in, in foreign institutions and in home institutions, they should be, they should be, they should be recognized. So basically it, it works that way that we must, uh, that we must go to, national, to some kind of national office 
and to ask for approval of your diploma. Okay, uh, so now you are a European, European student and you want to study abroad. So what do you have to do to, to, actually, to actually study, to actually study, actually study there? Study there. So what do you think? You, what, what, should, what should you do? No, you, you. <laughs> yeah, for example. Yeah, you probably have to have good grades to be accepted. To yeah, that, that is a good condition. However, there are many universities, for example, in the UK, which are, uh, or uh, across the Europe, which are not that perfect, like Oxford and Cambridge, and we will accept you with, with not, not, so great, not so good grades. So that's not a, that's not a higher condition. Higher condition. Yeah. Um, also, I know that most of the universities um, require TOEFL or SAT. Yes. Yes, the, the universities across, the, uh, across the Europe uh, require a language certificate. They do not language in which you are going to study. For example, in, in, in England, uh, in UK, it means that you have to have that you have to be taught in that in that language for at least I think two years, uh, and uh, or you have to have a diploma. For example, IELTS or IELTS test or SCE or CEA or these Cambridge tests. Or uh, in Germany, it means that you have to have a Sprach diploma from a uh, Goethe Institute. In French, uh, in France, I think it means that you have to have a DELF uh, diploma or something like that. Yes? Yeah, it's DELF. It's DELF. Okay. Yeah, it's DELF. Okay. <laughs> However, uh, uh, across, the, across the Europe there are many countries that offer the courses in English. For example, if you have, uh, for example, you can study in English in many in many countries, like uh, in Germany, in Spain, in uh, in in Italy, in Italy. So basically, if you are if you know that language, you can you can also apply there and be be accepted on on this uh, merit. However, uh, several countries also make uh, some so-called zero uh, year, where uh, they teach you how to teach the language before you are accepted to study actual, on in the actual university. Uh, that that is the case of Germany and uh, Austria, where you are offer, you are often accepted to zero uh, grade, where you study only the language for for a whole year, and then you are accepted to to continue your education in university in university in the degree of your choosing. So basically, uh, what uh, what that means is that the European countries are willing to accept the foreign uh, the, the foreign uh, students, and they want to and they want you to move out of your country and to actually. Uh, gain the new experiences from this uh, from from this. So um, the second the second thing that helps you to be admitted to uh, these foreign universities is to some is to some degree uh, international recognized education. For example, if you study uh, if you studying the international baccalaureate or A levels in your home country, uh, it, that means that you have an advantage for, advantage uh, in uh, admission in in the UK. Because simply because the education institutes in in the UK know what what they what they can expect from you, uh, uh, they know about they know, they know about this about this education. They know what to expect. And they know what to what to do. So it, it is advantage, again advantage for you. And these these diplomas are often taught in the language uh, in language in which you would uh, like to study. So for example, IB and uh, the LOs are are studied in English. So basically, it's, it's again your only your advantage. So, any questions so far? Okay. If I'm talking too fast, just say it. <laughs> okay. So, the 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 one of the one of the problems in education is often the that, that it costs too much money. Basically, if you want to study in, if you want to study in other countries, you should you should be prepared for for additional costs of of your education simply because of, of tuition fees. Or the or the or the main, or the simply the living costs in that country. That means that, for example, if you want to study in in, in the UK, you, are, you have to be prepared to pay nine nine thousand pounds for for tuition fees in England universities, and you have to be prepared for maybe the higher cost of uh, higher living costs uh, in com uh, in comparison to your home country, for example, Slovenia or Slovakia. It is, however, several countries pay, uh, have no fees, uh, no, no tuition fees at all. Uh, these countries are Austria, Cyprus, Denmark, uh, Finland, Greece, Malta, Norway, Scotland, Germany, and Sweden. So, several other countries actually have uh, uh, have really low tuition fees. For example, Slovakia, you have only admission you have only admission fee, administration fee. Like for example, it is something about 10 to 100 euros. Uh, so, many many countries in Europe that, uh, doesn't require don't require uh, the tuition fees from you, and However, the however the 
fees for uh, for uh, for higher level education, like master's degree, are are significantly higher than uh, than for an undergraduate study. So, for example, if you want to study in England, again, uh, the, the master's degree costs, or, or, or I think, uh, I think, it is it is something like uh, one times five or times the one point five times the cost of undergraduate uh, degree for a year. So. Basically, uh, that means that, that, if, that if you want to study in, study abroad in Europe, uh, you have to, you can choose uh, you can choose the country of your of your of your uh, of the of the of, of your choice uh, based on the based on the based on the based on the money you have. So uh, there is also important to say that actually the scholarships in uh, there are many scholarships that. Uh, that are present in the European Union. For example, in the UK, again, uh, there is a there is a governmental loan, uh, st governmental student loan that actually pays for you the nine thousand pounds a year, and you have to you have to pay it back only after, only after the after you you graduate from the university, and ha you have the income of uh, income higher than uh, twenty five uh, twenty one thousand pounds a year. So basically, it's it's a really it's, it's a really good loan, and several countries uh, several countries which have these tuition uh, tuition fees offer this kind of this kind of support for students because again they, they want to promote the mobility they want to they, they want to promote the the cultural exchange in uh, in their universities in these universities. However, um, uh, the scholarships uh, are not uh, subjected to the same condi the same conditions uh, uh, to have the same conditions as the as the condition as the university con conditions in universities. That means that there are, there can be uh, scholarships that which are only for uh, only for home students and only for uh, European students. They don't have to be the same as the, as in the case of tuition fees. Uh, they are not regulated by by European Commission. European Commission. The last thing, if you want to apply, is the is there are differences between in the admission process in, in every country in every country in Europe. There are not again they are not centralized. There, are, uh, there is no directive of, uh, of uh, European Union which says that, that the admission admissions should be the same all over the Europe. For example, you can have the centralized systems as in uh, United Kingdom, in the UK, uh, which is uh, uh, true, which is a system uh, through which you apply to all universities in in, in, in the UK. Uh, it is one. It is one website in which you choose the in which you choose the universities. You post there the pers your personal statement, your marks, your uh, uh, recommendation from one teacher, and then and then you send it to all to five universities of your choosing. However, in the cases of, for example, German or Germany or uh, or uh, Poland, uh, the admission process is not is not the same. It is not is not centralized, and you have to apply for every university you you, you want. Uh, for every university separately. So, for example, if you want, to, uh, you, uh, so that so that's it. The centralized system is uh, is again uh, is as well in Sweden, uh, which is, and I don't find any uh, any other centralized system in Europe with, uh, for admissions. So basically, that, that's it. Uh, the universities ha can have uh, can have the admission process set on different criteria. For example, in the UK, uh, the criterion is the is basically your grades and your personal statement. You 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 don't have to, you often don't have to uh, don't have to uh, write uh, some uh, some kind of admission test, uh, except for the best universities uh, like Oxford and Cambridge, some degrees. Uh, and what it means what it means is that they only look uh, look for your personal qualities uh, expressed in person in your personal statement. And for and for the grades you grades you have, you have achieved on your high school and the recommendation from your teacher. Uh, on the contrary, if, for example, if you apply to if you, if you apply to uh, some degrees in Europe or in Slovakia or Czech Republic, you have to you have to go through a really tough admission process where you very write tests uh, all the time. And for example, in in uh, to to be admitted to medicine in Czech in Czech Republic, uh, you have to you have to uh, write tests from three three subjects: uh, biology, chemistry, physics, and then it's it, then you often have to have uh, additional interview for for to be admitted. So there are, there are significant differences of what 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 the what the, what the universities require 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 from, from you. Uh, it's it's up to you to find to find out about it uh, to find out about it. Basically, 
basically uh, there can there can be there can be seen there can be seen a uh, distinction between the universities in universities in in UK and the other universities and the universities in continental Europe uh, on the merits of this because uh, what the universities in England actually require from you or in the UK require for you from you is to be uh, is academic excellence and to be able to be able to write that one one personal statement that shows you that showcase your achievements uh, during your high school and uh, they show you the, you, sh you show there your qualities so you, how do, how you can uh, write uh, uh, how, how can you how can you write a, a motivational letter how can you what, what have you achieved what are your interests uh, what what uh, how how do you contribute to community in uh, uh, in your uh, in universities however most of our other universities in basically in the in the central and eastern europe they don't seek uh, for these qualities they seek only for your academic uh, progress and basically it is uh, basic only uh, for your knowledge for knowledge of the subjects you are going to study uh, you are going to study so now even in the case that if you if you are studying in, a, in your home country there are several opportunities for you to study abroad uh, one of the main uh, one of the main projects of European Union is the Erasmus project it is uh, it is a project of student mobility throughout the whole Europe. It was again established in 1987, uh, 87, and today, today, uh, today, it evokes 2.5 million people uh, which participated in this project. So, uh, in this project, it is one of the most successful projects of the European uh, of the European Union. Uh, it is one of the most popular popular projects of the European Union as well, and it creates uh, and it, it creates opportunities for thousands of people to study abroad each year. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> just one point: the Erasmus was closed, uh, and uh, it was rechanged to something bigger and uh, with another name. But yeah, this one. Yeah, the Erasmus was changed. Uh, it's bigger, and the minute of the European Parliament uh, time, I think uh, three months ago, and now it's not called Erasmus, but Youth in Action or something like that. Yeah, Youth yeah. Mobility or. Maybe yeah, basically, like, but basically, I think that they're still uh, they're st still sticking, sticking with the name Erasmus, uh, but maybe in the internal internal documentation it's, it's called uh, in another name. Maybe it's a, However, it is it is a still it's a yeah, still it's same, same, it's still same, same, same project. Yes. Um, is it uh, like the Erasmus project also available for non-EU countries? No, the, no, no. Unfortunately, no, because okay. you have to be a member country of European Union to study uh, to be part to part to be participant. Uh, in Erasmus, because actually, uh, because actually, one of the one of the things that make Erasmus unique is that the European Commission give you money for studying. They give you maintenance uh, 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 maintenance grants uh, for for studying abroad uh, during during the time you are studying abroad. Yes. And what about the space in the, the partner partnership with the European Union? For example. Uh, Ukraine uh, or uh, Morocco, they have some partnership with the uh, European Union. How does it work for them? It doesn't work for them because uh, yeah. you, you really have to be the member state of the okay. European Union because actually they, 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 uh, the, the, I think the partnerships of Ukraine or, or, or this country, Ukraine, for example, it is all a economic partnership. However, okay. yes, there is a case of Norway, which is in the economy, uh, yeah. which participates in uh, our deeper level with the European Union, and you can go in, on Erasmus uh, over there. Yeah. So, uh, so, so basically, yeah. The, so I think the Nor I think the Norway and Switzerland and Liechtenstein and Liechtenstein yeah, yeah. are uh, yeah, participants in the Erasmus project. However, I doubt that Kosovo is one of, one of the countries. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I've heard about uh, this project in Albania. I've heard that people go through this project, but maybe it is it wasn't true or something. Oh, I don't. Again, yeah. other projects. What? There uh, are other projects. Too. Yeah, there are other projects. Oh, could be. Or special projects that there is. Yes. Yeah. So what Erasmus does is that uh, actually you are allowed to study for uh, from three to twelve months abroad, abroad to in, in other partner partner university. Partner university. You have to uh, these agreements uh, in which university you can study uh, are made uh, bilaterally. That, you, that actually it is uh, agreement between two universities. It is not uh, centrally man managed. It is only up to your university to establish the contacts and to establish the partnership. 
So uh, what that means is that you can't really choose on which university you, are go you want to you want to go to Erasmus. However, you can you are referred to several several places, and you have to choose from them. Uh, what that means? Uh, so uh, it has to be there has to be the partnerships. Uh, the as I said, uh, during your stay in the in the foreign country, you are you have the you have the Erasmus grant. It is uh, today. It is uh, it, I think its average or uh, its average is three hundred and thirty six uh, euros per month. So it it helps you to it helps you to pay the pay the maintenance cost maintenance costs. Uh, basically. Uh, if you are studying in, in, in the university of your choosing during the Erasmus, you don't you don't have to pay tuition fees even if they even if the even if the university actually requires them for normal students. You don't have to pay pay, the, pay no additional fees for your study except for the living costs. And your home institution has to uh, uh, give full academic recognition for the subjects you take you took on on your review. Basically, that means that uh, again, uh, this is possible only due to ECTS credit, because since the education, since the since the ECTS credits are awarded to people uh, to, uh, the, awarded in the same manner throughout the whole Europe, they actually uh, they actually one university can can uh, easily uh, easily compare uh, is easily recognize the credits gained in the foreign in the for, in your foreign uh, during your foreign stay. So. Uh, the most, the most uh, popular countries to go to Erasmus are obviously Spain, France, UK, uh, Italy, or Germany. The least, uh, the most people who, uh, the most countries, uh, countries from which the mo most people go out on Erasmus are again Spain, France, Italy, and Germany. <laughs> it is the, yeah, that, that's basically the, that, that's because of the, that's because of their size, uh, the relative size in Europe. Uh, however, there, there are differences in there are differences in um, there are differences in countries. In, uh, the, the, the ratio between the outbound uh, pers uh, outbound people and inbound of uh, students actually is uh, is the, is uh, pretty pretty uh, is is uh, is, uh, is the same in uh, is the same in in, uh, in these countries like Spain, France, Italy, and Germany. However, in, in the case of UK. There is a significant uh, higher number of students who who comes to the country to study uh, on their universities, and not so much people who goes uh, who goes to study elsewhere. Um, um, basically, I think that this is because the education in the education higher education in the England, in the UK is one of the most uh, one of the best in one of the best in Europe. However, in countries in Eastern in Central Europe countries, like for example Czech Republic or Hungary or uh, Slovenia, there is a there is a higher proportion of students which go on Erasmus than, than the students which come to Erasmus from from other countries. Uh, again, this is this I think this is mainly because of the uh, small the not so much propagation of of the of the uh, universities in the in the euro. However, uh, yeah, uh, so that's, that's basically. There are other uh, there are other pro programs uh, which uh, which supports uh, youth mobility and youth uh, uh, and mobility in, of of students. For example, there is a program called Leonardo da Vinci, which is for vocational training, vocational uh, vocational studies in Fachhochschulen in uh, Germany, uh, and uh, there is also a convenience project for schools that supports the exchanges in a, in, a, in a school setting. And then it's also called uh, a project called for adult learners. So basically, European you can see the European Union's Union focus, focuses on on all the all the possible all possible possible recipients of education in Europe. There is not there is only not only focus on on university students. There is focus focus on also on the whole on the whole uh, perspective of education in Europe. Uh, what is mm, these these programs are not so are not so popular as Erasmus. However, they are still here and they are they are, in, they are again renewed. I think in, in recent they were renewed for another for another years uh, for another uh, for another years. Yeah. So. And, um, yes. Are also those available just for EU countries? I think uh, I think that uh, to be honest, these countries uh, the 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 
European, the European Union partnerships, uh, I think, I think they are they are available for the same countries as Erasmus is uh, allowed. So basically, the same the European e economic area. I think. Uh, I don't uh, add something. Uh, I think some of Leonardo da Vinci, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's uh, it uh, it is connected with uh, very uh, well developed countries in the world. So uh, there's there can be USA, Australia, New Zealand, and I think that Singapore, uh, and uh, they uh, they can uh, send uh, people uh, to Europe, and uh, people from Europe can be sent there. But I'm not sure. I think I think that this uh, that, that this program is called Erasmus Mundus. Yeah, uh, and, and there is a program in which the European European universities are connected to universities in all, all over the world. Uh, however, uh, yes, it, it works. It works basically the same way as uh, as Erasmus. Yeah. However, it is slightly different that you are connected with the with the, the partners in Singapore, as, as we said, yeah. in Australia. Uh, yes, that's that's called Erasmus. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, so that's it. Um, yeah. So okay. So if you now I'm going to now I wanted to talk about uh, the education in in UK and uh, they get, uh, and talk about this. However, if you have any questions so far, do you have? Do you want to talk? There is a is an area I wanted to talk about in education, which I have not covered so far. Any questions about the European system of universities? No. Okay. Uh, so. So if you, so as I said, uh, if you want to, if you want to apply to to, U, to UK, there are good reasons for it. Basically, you have to uh, basically the the best uni best universities in Europe from from the if you if you take a look at the world world rankings of universities, the most uh, the most best best most number of universities. Uh, in, this, in those rankings are from UK. For example, the first, uh, the second best university in the world, uh, according to Times Higher Education Index, is University of Oxford. The seventh is University of Cambridge. The eighth is Imperial College, and the seventeenth is University College of London. Uh, and then it's uh, University of Edinburgh, uh, London School of Economics and Political Science, and uh, University of Manchester. So basically. And, uh, if you want to apply that, uh, there's a good, there are good reasons. There are the best universities uh, available to, uh, available in Europe. Uh, as I said, what you have to do is to apply through UCAS. The UCAS is a, is the is the system is the unified system of applying to universities. You have five choices of your uh, five five choices uh, from uh, five choices you can you can make. Basically, you can uh, basically that means that um, uh, that you choose five uh, universities of your choice and. However, you can do that. From, uh, however, you are not allowed to, for example, choose five uh, five five uh, medicine degrees. Uh, five medicine degrees. You are you are only allowed to choose uh, four four medicine degrees, and one has to be something else that is a specialty for medicine, for application to medicine. Uh, there are uh, what you have to what you have to supply to the to the to the UCAS is your grades, is your former records of uh, of. Of academic uh, excellence, and then you have to you have to write a personal statement as I explained earlier. Uh, it has to be 400, 4,000 uh, symbols. And they are not counting that on words, counting on symbols. And you have to you have to gain a recommendation from your uh, from your teacher. Basically, uh, if you want to apply for the for the best universities like Oxford and Cambridge, basically those two, you have to apply earlier because you you are separately uh, assessed by these universities, and you are often if you are successful, you are invited for interview in the sun, in the summer. So you have to apply. I think the deadline is something about 15 October. Um, there is a difference between between applying applying for applying to. Because between write, writing the personal statement for UK universities and writing the personal statement for US universities, basically uh, there there is different perspective of what uh, of what uh, of what a member of university should uh, sh should uh, should be. In U in US there is a much uh, emphasis on uh, being uh, being a part of the community, being the part being uh, the being the facilitator of um, activities, uh, making uh, making making several events uh, and. Doing doing stuff for the for the people in the universities and the academic excellence is not on, is not the first criterion it's not it's not the most important criterion. 
However, in the UK, uh, the best universities choose, on, choose, only, uh, choose only the best students in their field of, of expertise. So, for example, if you, so for example, in your personal statement, you have to, you have to put stress on the, on your ex academic achievements. You have to put stress on the things that you are, uh, that you are interested in, uh, in the field of your, of your uh, study, and not on the, uh, on the study that you play the violin for seven or, or, or eight years. It is not uh, that important for them. Um, and for, important for them. Um, basically, mm, yeah, for, it's only really important for them. Uh, again, uh, as I said, uh, the, then uh, you, you, are, you are assessed uh, by, the, uh, by the universities and you receive an, an offer from, uh, from your university, offer to study there. It's uh, it, can, it may be uh, conditional or, un or unconditional. Basically, if you are, if you not if you don't if you have not already ended the higher the second uh, the higher education like for example the high school diploma if you don't have this high school diploma you are, you have the conditional you have the conditional offer uh, that means that you have to that you have to obtain from uh, some uh, minimum threshold of marks from your final examination and then you are accepted to the university. Uh, However, there are several uh, there are several possibilities for you. Even if you don't manage to uh, if you don't manage to get those uh, get those marks, there is uh, there is a call there is something called clearing in the UK. That after you achieve those uh, that after the all offers are distributed and your final marks are finalized, you can uh, apply for the for another university, uh, which which has which has still uh, places for places for you, and you can you can still go. To the to UK to study there. This is also the, also the case if you, if you receive a no a no offer whatsoever. Basically, if, if all your five choices uh, def, uh, decline your uh, application, you can you can uh, still apply for another for an, for one another institution or two other institutions. There's also the thing if you are if you are too great too good on your final examination, it's called mm, um, I don't I simply forgot the, forgot the term. Uh, uh, it, it's a thing that if you if you have uh, greater grades than you, than you were required from all your offers, you can apply for you can apply for another uni university, which uh, which can which can be better of your of, of your choose of your choosing. Uh, it's called adjustment. Uh, it's called adjustment. Yeah. So uh, basically, that's the system of, of education in Europe. That's the system of. Uh, of your opportunities as a EU student to study outside of your own country. Do you have any questions? Please ask. We have to be here for another I don't know, five to ten minutes. How does it work when, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, how does it work when uh, almost nothing uh, is empty? That um, you, uh, you lose your five chances? Then you came, and there will be no no place on the, uh, for example, the medicine. You have to wait for another year. Yeah, you have to wait, you have to wait for another year because there are several hours hours prescribed courses, like for example the medicine or the law, uh, which are which is very hard to get to get there. For example, it's really hard to get uh, as a EU student to go for medicine in, in the UK. Uh, in the history of for, uh, for example, in the history of my school, my, my high school, there were only two girls uh, which obtained, uh, which, which gained the offer from from the UK to study medicine, uh, and it was, uh, I think, it was in 15 years. So uh, basically, also uh, basically it means that it is it's really hard to get, to study to study these subjects in in the in the UK. It, uh, it's also because the because the uh, government during your studies uh, of these professional degrees uh, puts a lot of uh, funds, in, uh, a lot of yeah. resources into you. And, it, and if you if you are EU students, you are not expected to stay in the UK. Basically, you are you are not. They don't expect you to stay there. So it is it is not it is uh, not profitable for them to yeah. pay you for your education, and then you leave for another country and be there and, be there, and you don't pay anything back on taxes or. Sure. Uh, on your skills and services in, in, in the UK, so basically that's that's why also that's why uh, several of uh, many uh, many 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 medicine schools over the Europe have only programs in their own home, home languages, 
and they don't uh, they don't offer they don't really like to accept, like to accept the European students. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is there any other program that includes the Scandinavian <laughs> countries? Uh, or that offers scholarships or youth exchange? Well, I think there's no, uh, there's no, uh, no other European, uh, there's no European program that, of, uh, that offers scholarships uh, to EU students uh, as well to study, to study at the universities for, uh, as their main university. Uh, however, it's, yeah, you're asking because of Kosovo. However, I think that there's no Kosovo because yeah. it is not recognized as a country in in the all in the all European by the all European countries. So I think yes, there are so two missing. Oh, I think five, five, five or seven. I think. Slovak Republic. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. Uh, however, it can be probably it, it can cause problems because if you are not recognized, then you can. Uh, I'm not sure how how this works. I can actually Google it up for you. After that, we can talk. We can talk after that about the possible situation. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, we can still try not for the whole European level, but as that individual. Yeah. But uh, you can't get into the state who doesn't recognize you. That uh, if you are going to France, you can't get through the Erasmus, but you can get uh, to on your own. I think. I think in your case it would be difficult for you to study in these countries as well as because you don't have you don't have the same status of uh, EU student. Uh, you have to uh, you are considered to be international applicant yeah. and you have to pay all the fees and it, the fees tend to be much higher than for the than, than the European students. For example, in, Slo in again in Slovakia, it is uh, uh, 800 or uh, 8,000 pounds, uh, 8,000 euros per year to start for international students to start there. However, it is also the case of England, I think, uh, in the, of the UK, uh, where you pay, where as international students, you pay, international student, you pay much higher fees than the domestic or EU nationals. So that can be done. Do the top universities actually invite people to come there, or is that just a myth? Invite people to come there? Yeah, if they recognize them as really, really good. Well, uh, I'm not sure if I understand, but. Uh, yes, uh, if you are if you are really really good and you put, and you send an application to Oxford and to Cambridge, for example, you and you are really good and you prove them, prove that to them, you are you are often admitted to the study there. No, there is a you, large community of you receive an invitation from them. No, no, no that's that's not uh, that's not actually happening. I think you have to be I don't know the uh, winner of golden or golden or medals from a subject Olympiads. Internationals or yeah, that's not that well. Right. However, I, I never heard of this, of this case, and I knew, I knew several of, of those people, and every one of them has to apply through the, the same process. That actually, they have to send the application, they have to go to interview, they have to go on tests, uh, uh, to make the tests, the admission tests. Uh, I know one, one man, uh, my friend, and he gets to Harvard and ex Oxford as well, in these two institutions. We're fighting uh, for uh, for him by the uh, by the decreasing of uh, of some some stuff. I think it was about one hundred dollars. It's a really a really small amount, but uh, we were uh, laughing at it because everyone tries to get there, but uh, only uh, only he has the chance to uh, to be the reason to fight the other yeah, That's not the case. However, I never heard of the communication thing you are mentioning, so. It works that way. Yes. Um, I don't know if it's like this um, abroad, but in the UK we can only apply for either Oxford yeah, or Cambridge. Yeah. Is that the same for? It's the yeah. same for European citizens because I think it's mainly it's mainly due that there is a if you if you were to apply for both the University of Cambridge and Oxford, uh, the your uh, your uh, interviews. In, the, in those two universities, can uh, can uh, be scheduled on the same time. Mm -hmm. So basically, it, it, it is made uh, is made to prevent this both situations mm -hmm. because the because both universities uh, have been, have the interviews in the in the in the same period, period of December and January. So. It's a, and do you have to go, to, for example, to UK for the interview? Yes, or? You, have, you have to go there if you are living in basically in Europe. And if you are if you are 
if you are applying them there from Singapore, they don't require you to do that. However, they, I think they require uh, the interview through the uh, internet. They have to, they have to Skype you. However, if you are living in Europe, you have to, you have to go there. What about U.S. universities? They also have Skype interviews. Yes, they have. Uh, and they do it uh, slightly differently because uh, the best universities have networks of people who study there from uh, from many countries over the world. So basically, uh, what they uh, what they do is that they send those people to meet you, to uh, uh, to meet uh, with with the uh, with the applicants, and they and they do that, that interview, and then they write a report from that interview. So for uh, so. That means that if you are living in France, uh, some, uh, the, you have to find uh, you have to find the graduate the graduate from this, this university throughout their system, and then you have to go for an interview with them, and they will write you a recommendation for them. So it's not uh, it's, it's not done the same way as, as Oxford and Cambridge. It's, um, it's more free. <laughs> And for how many universities can you apply at the same time? In UK, five. Uh, in UK, it's, it's, it's restricted to only five applications. However, in uh, in the other systems, like uh, in the other systems, you can apply to as many as you as you want. Okay. Can, can you like apply to several Ivy League uh, colleges? Yes, you can. You can apply. To, I think uh, there is a common application of for the United. For the, for the United States universities, and I think no no no, no. is that right? Uh, you have to, uh, when you you are you are writing the uh, you are setting the SAT tests uh, mm -hmm. to be to be to be admitted to uh, U.S. colleges, and the the college board the this is the institution which administers these tests sent uh, the results for several of so several universities of your choosing, and I think uh, they restrict the, these numbers to eight or. They restrict, this, they restrict this number, or yeah, they restrict this number to uh, about twelve or thirty. What? More than that. Okay, it can be more than that. However, um, they restrict this somehow. So uh, yeah, that's it. However, you can buy that's numbers. And there's also common applications. Yes, there's common. I think they, uh, the the Ivy League schools require supplements to yeah. com common applications. Yeah, yeah, they, they require. However, they require several essays from you. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the information about your family, about your income, about your uh, about your taxes, and uh, about or well, they require two at least two recommendations from teachers. Mm. And uh, each university has the different uh, you know criteria and different. Uh, what they want from you. So, for example, MIT, uh, MIT uh, has, the, has the system where you write several several short short essay uh, answer several short essay questions. However, in for example, to apply for Harvard, there are two topics uh, to, uh, for essays which should be extend, extended. I um, have about two or three thousand words. It's a very yeah. huge essay. And also, like, can you submit the same application to many universities, or they have different requirements? In which, in which, uh, in which country? US or in where? US. Mm. In the US, uh, yes, it is possible since they have a common application. And uh, however, you need to uh, supply this point they, for the for each university, which is which is different. Uh, you can you can send the common application in UK. You can send the common application application in Sweden. However, you can't do that in uh, in countries like Germany or in countries like uh, in Central Europe, basically, and uh, in France, in Spain, in Portugal. You can't do that in in, the, in those countries because they don't have the system centralized. You have to apply for each university separately. And is it an online application, or you have to send it by post? In first, okay. in first, uh, for example, uh, but most of the universities have the online application. I have a question about how to get to the university. Uh, you are uh, speaking about the tests. In my country, there, uh, you have two parts of the test. First part is that every single uh, single university uh, brings uh, their own um, tests, for example, about this medicine. But on the other hand, uh, you have side tests, uh, which are c common for, uh, for almost everyone. And uh, for your grades from it, you, uh, you can yeah. use it into the university. How it works in another state of, uh, of Europe? 
Do you know of, uh, uh, an well, example? Yeah, I know an example. I know again about the UK. Uh, well, uh, it is, again, it differs. For example, in the UK, there are, you are only assessed uh, by uh, you are basically assessed only on, uh, by your grades, uh, final grades from yeah. from the from your education. For example, so it, it, it's only uh, it's only about the A levels you achieve or the, uh, the overall IB score uh, score uh, the, the score. And uh, however, s several degrees can require additional tests. Like for example, they have uh, and they have mostly the and in the UK it's mostly centralized that they have the same uh, they have the same test for. Uh, for the same degree in uh, throughout the whole return. Yeah, I know, but uh, is, there, is there any one test for for everyone for every no every single? I think, I, I think no. Yeah. Uh, they, no, I, I never heard of that. Yeah. I think it's a specialty of Czech Republic. Yes. <laughs> but you are not obliged to uh, to sit uh, as a steel. I know, that's right. You are not obliged to, to sit still. You don't you don't have to sit. Uh, yeah, you uh, you have to write for a lot of a uh, lot of schools. Uh, uh, um, the half of them you need it, and the, I think the quarter of our universities use it as the help for you, as a, it supports you for. Yeah. Okay. So, any more questions? We are. It's one o'clock. We should uh, we should go to lunch. Thank you for your